Well, good morning. Now, they're going to stand their laughs. And we'll, we'll get started, maybe. But Roger did do a good job Wednesday night. I really enjoyed that. Yes. Good I really enjoyed that. I really did. That, the preacher said that this morning. I said it was Roger's message. Yeah. It really was. All right, speaking of cell phones, everybody in here got one? No. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> Who had a note? Well, you're kind of lucky. I got a rotary wall phone. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> wow. I got one too, genetic. <laughs> <laughs> work on that one too. <laughs> so, that's good, then, Bar. I can't, I can't, I don't think I can go with this now. <laughs> You've never read my old ass. <laughs> All right, for all those that do have a cell phone, I'm sure you've had to go through that thing called an upgrade. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where you want to or where you don't. Okay, when you start to do that upgrade, they give you this information. Has anybody ever read it? Through and through. Uh, probably Roy. Okay. Roy, probably probably Roy. Roy. Not Roy. <laughs> Roy, don't read the instructions. <laughs> You just say, I, I like, agree. I like I agree. a challenge of putting it together and not knowing what they say about it. <laughs> Sometimes I got to go back and find out what the factory has <laughs> done. Well, if you have a cell phone, <laughs> if you have a cell phone, every now and then, too often than not, that you, they send you this thing that you must upgrade. Now, yeah. my wife, she never did do it, and I had to buy her a new phone, because yeah. after a while, it just shuts down. Yeah. Right. It, you don't upgrade it. It's called an EULA. Did you know that? End User's License Agreement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what it's called. Even though you never read it, which I do not, one time I started to read that, and I said, nah. I just, I and agree. to get it, you keep your phone going, you've got to push, I agree. Right. Now, when you push, I agree, that means you agree to all of their terms. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of them. They control where how you use that phone and they also control your telephone whether you want to or not and a lot of the upgrades i even called to complain about one because after they upgraded i'm really not i have to be programmed all over again because i don't have to use the present thing half the time or used to when mike was here i'd ask him or ask katrina it, some, it, of those, some of those upgrades though prevent you from getting a virus right well, yeah they're, they're patches that, that yeah are, uh, thief, Figured and out to how get, to get in, and they, they shut that door or off. Or to fix a bug, because yeah. they always have a bug, so then they have to come back and fix right. the bug. <laughs> but it's your choice whether you agree or whether you don't agree. They to either do it or throw it away, one of the <laughs> Exactly. So you're going to do it all the way, but you never have control of your phone go. It, it's all or none. Right. That's the way it is. I agree or I don't agree. Marty's got to come and say, shouldn't I do this? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Okay, well, we get to that in a minute. Well, Paul is teaching to the Galatians, and they're speaking to the Galatians again, and one thing about it is their personal freedom. They have the personal freedom in Christ, but they've not, they have some questions about it, or there's been some questions come up. But as we know, Paul is dealing with some people called the, the Judaizers. Well, I'll get that right. And the Judaizers, of course, this church is made up of Gentiles and Jews, Split congregation, probably. I don't know. And like in Rome, where it's definitely split down the middle. But it's a mixture. And anytime you have a mixture, it's definitely different ideas. There's problems. Well, these Judah Judaizers can try to convince the Gentiles that they basically need to become Jewish. Jews. Yeah. And as we discussed last week, no. <laughs> that good one. <laughs> yeah. As we discussed last week, that might not be so comfortable. But their biggest point was to be like the Jews was to be circumcised. And to keep the law. To do what? And to keep and the to law. Keep, and to keep the law. So that's what he's dealing with. And I thought about this. You know, preachers really, I'm not going to say they have it easy, but you know what Paul went through. Mm -hmm. Trying to cheat, to teach, to trying to change somebody's mind. It's been hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. This is what I got to do. And to come along and somebody, you don't have to do that. You're free now, which is the truth. Mm -hmm. right. But to change their mind completely would be difficult. Mm -hmm. And then with somebody like these, like when I sit and listen to you Wednesday night, I was attentive to you, or while you ever preaches. 
I, can you imagine probably these guys are saying underneath the breath, that's not true, that's not true, that's not true. <laughs> that would be hard to deal with, I, I would think. But they, they had a difficult task before them. But anyway, that's the basic of our lesson. These, these Judaizers or anybody else who causes disruption to the church, you, you may have attention in church, you know. And any time you have attention in your church, it's not good. No. If you have two people that are at odds with each other, it causes tension in mm -hmm. your congregation. But the Lord gave us a way to get by that if we'll just do it. I remember one time, Roger, the one of the best things, and it was, I mean, I didn't know what to do. Most of the time, I'm, I'm kind of up on top of things. I pay attention. But at, back when we had a big congregation, if you remember this, Eddie had the youth group. You remember this? Mm -hmm. And it was just, boom, all of a sudden. There was two girls stood up. You remember this, Roy? Oh, I remember that. Hey, son. Oh, yeah, and they were fighting. Oh, my they were Lord. fighting. Not, Not really fist but, fighting, but everybody thought it was going to be a fight. Right. It yeah. was real. It, yeah, it was so, so right, Jude. You could tell it better than me, I'm sure. We were like, oh, wow. This What's is going not on? Gonna be good. <laughs> yeah, one of them was said he she was talking about me, right? And the other one I thought it was about a boyfriend or it something. Was, it was. It about was. Boyfriend. Yeah. They yeah, were hammering each other. Yeah. And then all of a sudden all calmed down. And they said, Well, okay, we need to handle this the way it says to in the Bible. Uh -huh. It was so good. It was. You couldn't forget that. But everybody. <laughs> I mean, that was the best thing. It was one thing we got on, but that was the best thing I ever saw. The Bible tells us this is the way we're going to handle. If you so you have odd against one another, you're to go to that person mm -hmm. and talk to that person and get it settled. You you just don't have that tension. Mm -hmm. So back down. Yeah. Everybody didn't hear this, but I'll never forget what Ray said there one morning. He be a state police or a former pastor, you know. He said two women got into it over a corpse. <laughs> in a casket, and they end up oh, turning the casket and, over in the church. It's yeah. Very general. Yeah, I remember him saying that. <laughs> Why are you fighting over a dead body? Good <laughs> I'm really like the guy or like something he had on. <laughs> it wasn't the body, maybe it was that rainy out there. Kind of a similar situation to what the girls had going on. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, anytime there's tension in church, there's a problem. You know, there's. When you come to church, you should be of one mind, one accord. And that's, mm -hmm. that's the worship of the Lord. But that's what that was all about. But it was good. It was. Okay. Uh, verse 1, I say this for everybody. Everybody know where we're at? Galatians 5.1. All right. Thank you, Katrina. You're welcome. That shows you I never know where I'm at. <laughs> okay. Verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in liberty, wherewith Christ hath made you free. Uh, I like to look at this and say, hold your ground. <laughs> Hold your ground. And he mm -hmm. says, it made me free. You want to make him free of? He made him free of the law. The law. <clears throat> Christ set us free from the law. Of all of its burdens. Mm -hmm. And the rest of this, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now I thought about it entangled. I, I think like fishing line <laughs> or a fishing net. How can anybody keep one untangled? It's always in a knot or entangled. But if you picture bondage, to be, you always picture the oxen in the field pulling the pulling that big old yoke and the plows behind them, and it is it is a hard thing to do, but they're strong. But mm -hmm. me, not so much. But what does Christ say? Come to me, for my my yes, yes. my long, yoke is easy. Yeah, and my burden is light. My burden. He, he takes he handles our burden for yeah. us, people. He for takes just light. he takes our bright <laughs> if we will put. Our burdens upon him, laying at his feet. He doesn't expect us to carry the burdens. Can you imagine? Well, me anyway. Can Can you imagine trying to obey all the things in the law? No. That would be. To me, that would be a terrible burden. Yeah. And to go try to go to bed and uh oh, I broke this, and I, I I didn't tell Roger the truth, or I took one of his nails home. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I actually delivered him nails once. I want to get rid of But, you know, to me, it, it would be hard. Mm. I couldn't do it. And that's why Christ came. People couldn't yeah. leave the law. Right, they couldn't do it. But these people, these are Judaizers, are trying to get convinced the Gentiles to go back to this. Mm. <laughs> 
Be, uh, verse 2, Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Now, some of these people had not yet gave in to the pressure. But if you got somebody just keep hammering at you all the time, have you ever done that? We just, you know, did, did. Okay. <laughs> Make sure get through you. Yeah. yeah. But he said, Behold, I say, uh, listen to me. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. Mm -hmm. Pay attention. But you profit nothing. But a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. It's not going to do you any good. And I want to ask you a question about this, Roger, because I, I don't know. I'm not gonna, I could find it, but maybe. Doesn't it say somewhere that if you've heard the word and you, I'm gonna get it. If you, in other words, these people had listened to Paul and they had accepted Christ. Now, if they go back to the law, I know it says here, Paul says here later, you have fallen from grace. That's not right, is it? I mean, it's not, it's not right. Then they're lost again, is that right? No. No, well, they're not lost. But okay. I'm, I'm okay, trying to. Get, okay, we get it. Okay, I don't know how to say. It. Okay, yeah. I know you can go and repent, always, right, right. but it was all for nothing. What Christ did was for nothing. If they go back to the law and they say, "I have to keep the law," then why, you're why saying would he come? That, why would he come if the law right. would save them? Yeah. You're saying that what he did nobody. wasn't enough. You're putting yourself back under bondage. Right, yes. right, exactly. Yeah. And why would you want to do that? You're not lost. I'm trying to think of you're the word. You're putting yourself back under bondage. It's like today. How would okay? Okay, how would I? It's like today. How would I? How would I say this in today's terminology as compared to what Paul was saying? How can I put this in today's perspective? You remember, or I, well, I know you remember, but I, I pay very close attention to what people say. You remember just about every Sunday morning when Brother Jim gets into church, he says, now I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version, mm -hmm. remember? And he says, well, you may you may have a different version. Right. All right. We have people today, and I'm not saying this to be critical, but I'm saying it to be honest. We have people today that if you don't read and believe the King James Version, yeah. you're not a Christian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean that's one way we and that's what the point I'm trying to put across. Right. We're putting ourselves we're putting ourselves under bondage. Because and, I think I have to do this. And, and in a I way don't. we're saying if you don't believe exactly what I do, exactly. then you're lost. Mm -hmm. And that's that's not biblical. That's not what I, I had a lady tell me one time, I'll never forget this. My goodness gracious. We were talking about different versions of the Bible. And children, I got just about every version there is at home. And I read every one of them. I'll be honest, I don't I, I'm, I'm saying, I hope nobody gets upset over it. What I'm saying, I read every version there is. <laughs> I've read it from front to cover. But what I'm saying is, I had a woman tell me one time, well, you're not a Christian because you don't read the King James Version. I said, yes, I do, lady. I said, I've read it about 40 times. <laughs> <laughs> now, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, they're, they're putting herself under bondage. And I yeah. guarantee you, she do not understand. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I still can't think of that word I'm going <laughs> When you go back into the world, what's that called? Oh, uh, you uh, backslide. Backslide. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you know what I'm saying? What's the difference of what you're saying? If they, once they've been saved, and they go back to the law, it'd be to me, it'd be like be backsliding. Okay. That's what I was trying to think. Of. Like, good, not good. Thank you. <laughs> what was that? What I told the Pastor after a while ago? Age remembering stuff. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, Paul's wanting all distractions removed. Listen, this circumcision, back to law, is just a distraction from what it was all about. They had These people had accepted Paul's mission, his words, they had accepted faith through Jesus Christ, but now these people were trying to cause trouble. Now we know that Paul was a big advocate of the law before, mm -hmm. before yes, all this, was. and even after he... he uh, accepted Christ, he, he remember he, he encouraged Timothy to be circumcised because Tim had, Timothy had different parents, one Greek, one one Gentile, or, or one Jew and one Gentile. Now he encouraged that so he'd fit in. Right. That, that was not a requirement that he's been saved. For, <laughs> all right, three. For I testify again to every man that he is circumcised, that he is a debtor of the whole law. Remember the E-U-L-A. If <laughs> you say, I agree. <laughs> and you push
wish that little thing right there, yeah, your phone is upgraded. If they own your phone. If, you, if they are circumcised, if they do that, then they've got to keep it off. You can't pick and choose. Right. You know, you can, when you upgrade your telephone, you could, if you went down there and looked at it, there's parts you might want to keep, others you wouldn't, that don't work. When you agree, you agree. All or nothing. That's right, you're all in, in other words. You're in with both feet. <laughs> Money or not, you're in both feet. So that's why he wants to tell them you're in three. There's, you can't pick and choose. If you're, you, you're either with the law or you're with Christ. And if you go back to the law, and Katrina said a while ago, what Christ did was for nothing. What you did for nothing. You, you know, it's all or done, people. Remember that when you push that, I agree, but. <laughs> Christ has come no effect unto you, verse 4, whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. Now, the, ooh, that's. Well, I was getting blood out. So I asked you, and I, I made a little note right here. Ask Roger. <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I don't know something, see, I, like I said, any of you all could go up here and teach. All of you would be probably more knowledgeable than me. But you're welcome. Still no takers. <laughs> no. <laughs> but that's tough. Have you fall from grace? <clears throat> Righteousness, salvation, is by the grace of God. And all we have to do, I mean, there's things we need to do. We mm -hmm. should be. Uh, what was it? James said, show me your faith. Now, you'll, see my, you'll see works. You will, he always see said, show me your works. But works. If, you're, if you're under grace, if you're a Christian, you're going to try to do something. If it's me trying to make you all laugh and enjoy Christianity, you're going to do something for the Lord. But to fall from grace, God always, if Roy's always said, if you'll make the Father happy, love his son. Believe in his son. But if God removes his grace from you, you're in trouble. That's the way I look at it. And that's what Paul says. If you if you're just, if you're adjusted by the law, you're not you're not justified by the grace, for sure. You have fallen. If you think you're gonna have to be justified by the law, then God's gonna remove his grace as far as your belief in his son. Is that right? Okay. And forget the upgrades. <laughs> Five. If, if we, it goes to we now, if we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith, we, mm -hmm. before it was you, now he's got we, we're going to wait for that Spirit because we're not going to be, our hope is not completely fulfilled until we're taken from here. When we, is, when we go to heaven, that's our hope. That's our faith. That's what Christ promised us. We keep our faith. The Spirit will guide us. He will fill us. He will help us. He will strengthen us. We can lean on him. But as, for, as Paul says, it's for we, our righteousness, we wait for that. And one of these days, we will make, we will, when we ascend, however we ascend in a half a second or what it is Roy talks about, then we will be, be righteous. we will be righteous. We're going to wait for that. We're not going to, we're going to fall back into this law business and, and do what they have, they're wanting it to do. But this Holy Spirit that Christ sent to us, that God's Father sent to us, fills us now. We don't need the law where you lay in bed at night and I stole Roger's nail to worry about it if I can get to the... We just need to pray about it. Then I need to return your nail. <laughs> but our faith in Jesus, people, is what makes us righteous. That's our, and our hope is, as he ascended to the Father, he, he prepared us a place. He promised us that. That's our hope. And when we are righteous because we will be declared righteous, we stand before the Father because of our faith in Jesus Christ. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth in anything or uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Doesn't matter where you're Jew or Gentile. Right. It don't mean a thing. The Jew are circumcised, the Gentiles are not. It, it doesn't mean one thing. It's far as, as you are justified. If it takes a law to justify that, they're barking up their only tree. The only thing that's going to make you justified is our faith in Jesus Christ. His death on the cross, period. Amen. <coughs> but in God's eyes, he sees one thing. Do you love my son? He don't care if you got blonde hair or if you got gray hair. 
or no hair on it. He doesn't care. Now, if you're Jew or you're Gentile, he doesn't care. We're all one. He don't have to count as much. That's true. But he doesn't care. In God's eyes, all he's looking for is that love you're talking about for his son. Then you are justified by faith in his son that he sent as our Savior. Because it's, it's a new covenant. It's a fulfilling of the law to Abraham. And it came through Abraham. It's a new covenant, Jesus Christ. He, he set aside the old covenant. If you, what was it when they come to the Red Sea, some of them turned around and looked back? Mm -hmm. Wanted to go back. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why would you want to go back? Because the water had not People yet. are more afraid <laughs> of the devil they don't know than the devil they do know. <laughs> well, I guess. It's true. <laughs> Well, I, I, every time I read this stuff, I, I, I can say why, why, why. But I try to remember that we have this. We have all the Bibles and you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And they have the, the preachers. They, and they are real literate. You know, I can remember, if you go out and look at some of those tombstones I told you about, that we had a lot of literacy in this country, too, people. Mm -hmm. And if you're not educated or around somebody you can trust, it could be an issue. So... It's hard, it's hard for you to downplay these people when they didn't know any better. Of course, they'd already Listen. been through the plagues and came out. And, you know, I, I understand what you say, but sometimes I think, how could you not see? How? <laughs> but me, if I went up to the Red Sea and Roger was leading me and he raised his staff and that water parted, I think I'd follow Roger. <laughs> and I'd remember it as long as I'm alive. <laughs> as long as I'm alive. They didn't follow him long. He'd go on the no, other no, side and they start typing. Like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We would be better off. I'll never ever forget that there's a tombstone in a, in a graveyard over next to Pritchard somewhere. And it says, to rise no more. And I thought, buddy, you're mistaken. You're going to come up regardless how you went yeah, down. You that's will right. rise again. One way or the other. <laughs> but look at Paul, though. Before he was converted on oh, the yeah. Damascus Road. I mean, he, he was the, writing to Timothy, he says, I was a blasphemer. I was a persecutor. Mm -hmm. I was a murderer. Mm -hmm. He yeah. said, but God showed me mercy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Paul, here again, if you study the book of Galatians, Paul went out into the desert of Arabia, and the Bible, he specifically says to this Galatian church here in chapter 1, he, he spent three years of just him and God teaching him. Mm -hmm. So if it had not been for God teaching him, he would have been just like these Judaizers. Mm -hmm. Right. Because he was one before. Right. Yeah, he was. He sure was. But God had to show him. <laughs> I brought a message one time if God could save Paul, he could save anybody. You just think of all this stuff yeah, that he yeah, done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was a murderer. Last man, last I mean, he done, he done it yeah. all. And he was so convinced that what he believed sure. was right. He was highly religious. Yeah. Kind of like Nicodemus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs>